Hi, today is Friday, March 31st, 2017. It's the fifth day of the fifth week of Lent, and this is a sweet speech. And uh, I would like to start this video by quoting uh, one of my favorite economists, philosophers, and uh, political commentators, and what have you. He is a jack of many trades, but I think his formal title is economist. Uh, it is the American economist Thomas Sowell, and he once said, All of the big word on the left is compassion. The big agenda on the left is dependency. End quote. And that's what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the welfare state, or more in general, or more specifically, dependency culture. And, uh, well, my beef with the welfare state, really. Let's take uh, a little historical overview view of it first before we go into before we go into what's really going on. During the 19th century and early 20th century, Sweden was, well, as you might know, a poor country, which is pretty obvious because it was an agrarian economy. Industrialization started late in Sweden. Some Sometime around the mid 1800s, it started. It started with uh, an Englishman named Samuel Owen and his factories, and and it was a, s a slow process. And by the late 1800s, still most Swedes worked in the agrarian sector, and of course it couldn't really feed all these people. By the way, that's why about one million Swedes emigrated to the United States and Canada, and some went to Brazil and so on. But there was a lot of the poor Swedes left Sweden, but not all. And there, I mean, starvation, mass starvation, it ended when, when uh, potatoes were introduced in Sweden. Even the poor people could could have potatoes. And uh, what happened then was, uh, well, the dangerous uh, dangerous uh, illnesses were sort of. Uh, swept away by vaccines. So a lot of good things happened in the 1800s. Many ignorant Swedes will think about the 1800s as just a terrible time, but it was really when things started to be, get better in Sweden, especially from, from about 1860. From about 1860 until 1960, Sweden had a record growth, and it had nothing to do with socialism. It had everything to do with free enterprise, because Sweden was a country with 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 few regulations and it was easy to to run businesses in Sweden but of course there were still some people who could not fend for themselves and these are the people i am thinking about right now to begin with and what happened with them well there were there were charitable organizations there were charities that were run voluntarily that would help people who couldn't fend themselves. And that was a big thing in Sweden. Also, there were lots of self-help organizations. You had, for instance, in Stockholm, and I would suppose in other places too, but in Stockholm you had night schools for workers who wanted to get somewhere, who wanted to, if they just wanted to educate themselves, or if they wanted to be able to achieve more in their lives, than, than, than the lot they sort of were given, the hand they were given when they were born. I mean, because in socialist countries, people usually think that if you're born poor, you stay poor. And that's really what socialist means. It does not mean that class society is abolished. It means it gets much worse. But there were lots of good things going on. But somewhere around 1930, Sweden, Sweden, Sweden got a social democratic government, and they started uh, uh, implementing their program. So, help to the, to the poor, help to the needy, was being nationalized. Government would take care of this. Local, local communities, I mean municipalities, not any, any voluntary stuff now, would take care of this. And the welfare state gro started to grow, while the charities uh, disappeared. The self-help organizations disappeared. I mean, there are a few left still in Sweden, but there isn't much of it. 
and the civil society of Sweden, which would which also could help people to well get back on their feet if they fell. They became a part of government through government subsidies. Churches turned into a real branch of government. Well, of course, Sweden has a state church, but uh, the state church become much more of a part of government when go when government paid for all this. It started paying for all this. And the civil society was crushed. And by the way, from about 1970, Sweden was no longer a model nation. It started going, going down, and it's still going down. But the welfare state kept on growing. And that's where we're at right now. There is, there is a welfare state in Sweden that is pretty big. It's pretty big in Norway too. I might mention that too. We'll see. Uh, but whatever. Or not whatever, but anyway. Uh, about uh, because the problem with the welfare state, I completely understand the idea behind it, and uh, the people who who wanted to imp to implement this, I think many of them were probably good people. They probably just wanted to for they just probably want to eradicate poverty, which is a noble goal. They just wanted everyone to be able to be well fed, well clothed, have a nice place to live. I completely understand all that. They wanted to fight hunger, illiteracy, filth, because a lot of people were very filthy in the 30s. They didn't have, they didn't, they, did, they didn't have the, they, they, they couldn't access uh, to bath on a regular basis or take a shower. So I understand the noble goal. It is a noble goal. But the problem is when you hand over this, uh, this power to government, government starts to control you. I mean, you can see it on a big societal level, how government took control of organizations. That is one thing. But you can also see it in what happened to individuals and maybe more, more interestingly, families in Sweden. And this has also happened in Norway. Maybe not as much as in Sweden, but it has happened. I have seen it in both Sweden and Norway. And what happened was that uh, when uh, a wife would no longer need to depend on her husband, when children no longer needed to depend on their parents, when the elder no longer needed to depend on their savings or on their children, because government would take care of all this, families started to break apart. In the 70s, there was a boom of divorces in Sweden. My grandparents, the paternal ones, the ones from Finland, were about the only ones in Sweden who did not divorce in the 1970s. I exaggerate a little, but just a little. I am so impressed. I am very impressed that they stayed married all the time. But that was, I think, because they were cultural conservatives. I don't think they ever used that term to describe themselves. But looking in retrospect, that's exactly what they were. And I am so grateful for the values they instilled in me. But anyway, that was a digression, but maybe an important one. And the breakdown of the family. What does this do? This creates a dependency cycle. A divorced woman, or maybe a woman who was never married, with children. She can't really go out, go out and work, or maybe she can, but then her children have to be sent away to daycare. Where they can be indoctrinated with all sorts of crazy ideas, and trust me, that has been happening, and that is happening in both Sweden and Norway, as far as I know. And uh, because the government becomes the father, the father is gone, and sometimes he's got some connection with his children, but there are just so many dysfunctional families all around Sweden and Norway. And uh, combine this. With, uh, with governments who think they own children, who think that they have the right to walk into your home and tell you that we don't think you're a good parent, so we are going to take your children. And of course, in some cases, they are all right, of course. And not all parents are good parents. And in, there, there is, of course, some extreme cases where these things need to happen. But that is very extreme cases. In most cases, Children are better off living with both of their parents. 
I am that is my firm belief. And I am completely convinced that children are better off having their mom at home. Yeah, sure, that could be at home too in a period, but your mother will always be the closest caregiver. I mean, that's just pure nature, it's biology. If you're gonna question that, sure you can. That, that's what happened in Sweden. But it doesn't matter what you think about it. What matters is what is the truth. And the truth is children are better off living in stable nuclear families. They are better off with having their mom at home taking care of them. And this is not a popular opinion in Sweden. But I hope some of my American fans will like it as, like this at least. And maybe some of the Swedish ones. Some of the Swedish contrarians. And uh, there are so many things I could say about the welfare state. I could say, because I mean there are things connected to this. I could talk about how high taxes, lots of regulations, and I think actually the regulations in Sweden and Norway is a bigger problem than taxes when it comes to business. Supposedly Sweden has relatively low taxes on businesses, so they say. Not just the Swedish government, but it is said so in some statistics. But regulations are terrible. This means that it's difficult to hire people, or well, you can hire them, but it's difficult to get rid of them, so businesses are careful. At the same time as you can get someone who is registered as unemployed to work for you for free. Because you don't have to pay this person's wage. The wage is paid by the government or by the authorities in one way or the other. So why would you hire anyone? I mean, for for uh, at least not when it comes to what do you call it, menial jobs? Yeah, simple jobs, jobs that still needs to be done, but where you sort of could hire in theory anyway. When I know it's not that simple, but I mean, with skilled labor, you will still need to hire someone. And I mean, skilled labor could be both academic things, but it could also be like carpenters and whatever. There's a lot of things. It could be. But it's like they have been meddling with the competition on the job market. The government, first they break your legs, then they hand you crutches, and they tell you that you should be, you should be grateful. Because what would happen to you otherwise? You would just lie on the street and die, because you had no crutches. But who broke your legs to begin with? And I mean, and this fits just the pattern of creating a dependency cycle. Create an Many people will, will end up here for a long time, maybe for the rest of their lives. And because, I mean, really, what's needed is strong families. And uh, what's needed is a strong civil society, but it cannot and should not be government fed. It, it should be able to live on its own. Whether it's a charity, a church, whatever it is. And like some person told me, Usually, business people and farmers are more sane than the people in all these government-funded jobs. Or well, Because one of the sinister things about the welfare state in Scandinavia, I mean, if you have an American perspective, you will probably think of welfare. <laughs> that goes to, well, the poorest among you. But even the middle class in Sweden and Norway are getting... Well, benefits for having children sounds good, doesn't it? Money for nothing sounds very good. So, and the argument is because you need to help families. Yes, you should, but not in that way. What happens here is that first the middle class is paying a large part of their income in taxes, direct or indirect. Then they are going to get back back some of it as a benefit, children's benefits. Maternal leave benefits, paternal leave benefits, or, well, there are many things. But all of this is, it would be much better if they could just, could have kept the money and saved it for themselves and, and had their, and decided for themselves how to use it. But that would, that would strip bureaucrats, politicians, the state, the, the authorities of power. Because what this really is about, it's about control. The welfare state is not about being good to the needy. The welfare state, 
when the welfare state is handing out money to people, it also gets control of them. That's what it's about. It's about control. And that's what I have to say about this right now. I would like to thank the people who, uh, who are supporting this channel uh, through prayers, through PayPal, through Patreon. It's all greatly appreciated. And if you like this channel, please subscribe so you don't miss anything. Uh, click the little bell, I think it helps. Uh, please share my videos on social media, on, on Facebook or Twitter or whatever. And I really need your help there because I am now trying to reach 1000 subscribers. And when I reach that, two things will happen. First, I will make a sandwich cake, smorgos torta in Swedish. And uh, I will have a celebration. Uh, video and then I will make a series on on the history of Sweden and what made the Swedes think the way they do and I think that might be interesting to you and also if you got something to say please comment if you like this video please like it and uh, I would of course also like to encourage you to support this channel and I will include all the necessary information about that in the information box below. This is a Sweet Speaks. Have a nice day.